grew up in the 90s in the Chicago area, and Michael Jordan was everybody's hero. I tried to make the sixth grade team, failed to make the team. I remember actually crying over that and having my grandpa console me and say, you just need to work harder, you just need to work harder and be better than the next guy. I uh, started playing basketball probably when I was in fourth or fifth grade. Played up to when I was eighth grade in CYO, which is a Catholic youth organization. When I was younger, basketball wasn't in service of a greater good. Basketball was kind of like the good. And a lot of what I did throughout my days was centered on uh, fulfilling that good. But now basketball is in service to the greatest good, is in service to, to God. I love playing basketball. And when I came here to Mundelein, I was very excited that I can play basketball here. Basketball, it's a real simple thing. It's just recreation. It's just something to do for fun, to exercise. But it has that team aspect. Part of the reason we play basketball here is that it binds us together as men, as Christians, and as guys getting ready to be priests. We know that we're going somewhere and we want to go somewhere together. That God has called us all individually from different parts of the world, different parts of life, for one single purpose, and that's to be priests of Jesus Christ. I'm very enthused as I look to the future of the priesthood. These young guys grew up with this heroic pope. I think John Paul, when he became pope, got this ship going in the direction of mission and purpose and a Christocentrism. He was very clear about the centrality of Jesus Christ. They also caught, though, John Paul's optimism, his joyful spirit, his claiming of the Catholic tradition, and his confident assertion of it on the world stage. They loved that, and they caught that spirit, and they have it too. To be a priest is a calling. It's a specific calling, a specific way to be a Christian in the world. It's a structure of committed love where you commit to your beloved, the church, the same way that a married man would commit to his wife. From my, my family history, my family background, the call to service, especially to our country, was something that was always with us. Coming out of high school, I wanted to be a college basketball star, and, and I ended up finding a university that I was able to play college basketball at, as well as receive an ROTC scholarship to enter into the military. Christ is always walking with us and leading us in this right direction, because I never would have guessed in a million years. I'm signing as a freshman to go play college basketball, that four years later I'm gonna be entering seminary uh, for the Archdiocese of Atlanta and the military. Never would have guessed it in a million years. But you know what? God has his plans. He's helping me to be a better seminarian by giving me this cool gift of basketball that I get to play. Well, with the seminary, it's a team effort because we are one church headed towards one goal. You see, in basketball, you have to practice. A good player listens to his coach, listens to his players. In the Catholic faith, you have to listen. Uh, listen to what other people are saying, as well as, in prayer, listen to God. I'm not good at basketball because of myself, but that um, I do it for God, and that He's given me these gifts. We talk about human formation here a lot at the seminary, along with intellectual, pastoral, and spiritual formation. There's human formation. John Paul II said that uh, the priest's humanity should be a bridge to Christ. So if your humanity is attractive, it's well-formed, you have a nice personality, you're well-rounded, you're athletic, well, that's, a, that's an attractive bridge for people to come across. I think for people to see this generation of, um, of seminarians, that these are integrated, well-rounded, you know, good people. Guys from nine different seminaries are coming from all around the country to play a basketball tournament. 12 minute halves, basically running, running clock. Real quick games, a lot of games. Every seminary sends their you know, 10 best guys to try to win the championship. And it's just a fun weekend.
Father Pat O'Malley was a great Chicago priest who passed away last year. He loved sports and basketball. This year, the tournament is named after him, the Father Pat Invitational um, in remembrance of Father Pat O'Malley. We have a team that we practice twice a week, and you know, if it weren't for the tournament, it would be harder to get people out to play basketball. So in a way, it's a reason to, to come out. Not only are we going to do this fun thing, this tournament, but everybody gets a chance to get to know guys from other places. And it's just a good way to realize that you know, we're not alone in this, that there are more people ready and willing to give their lives over to Christ out there that we never see. Uh, and that's always encouraging, I think. This tournament goes back about 14 years, and I've always just loved the buzz of this weekend. Uh, just the energy, the excitement, uh, the camaraderie, the, the competition of the games. It's a great spirit, and it, to me it's always been a way to show this new generation of uh, seminarians and all of their focus and energy, enthusiasm, excitement. I went to a basketball tournament at another seminary um, a couple years ago, and I remember the priest said to us in a homily, you don't know each other, but you all know Christ. I didn't know these guys from Adam, but there was already kind of a bond there. As guys getting ready to be priests, it was like we had the same best friend, you know? And so you already know something about the other guy because of Jesus. I play basketball so that I can be a seminarian, ultimately is what it comes down to. Because it's going to allow me to stay physically fit. We're soul and body, so I have to take care of that. It's a gift that God's given me. Uh, which is kind of interesting to think, like, basketball is serving a purpose in God's plan, in God's mission, in my life. When we become a priest, everyone knows what we stand for and, and who we are. And everything that we do is an example of the church. So in a sense, we are in the front lines. People associate us with our church, um, as they should. Whatever we do reflects our church, and whatever the church does reflects us. A seminarian is tried, a priest is tried in his vocations. The perception of the priesthood has really changed and really by the culture is viewed in a, a negative light. You'd think men would shy away from the seminary, men would shy away from vocations, but yet we see that call to a difficult lifestyle. We see that call to a sacrificial life, and that really appeals to men. Fear comes from a lot of places. One is, is this something strange I'm, I'm going into? Uh, will my family and friends uh, think I'm crazy? Will they support me? There's a natural fear there. There's a fear, too, of, of the radical self-gift involved in priesthood. So John Paul II talks about the law of the gift. It just means your being increases in the measure you give it away. Well, that's a good Christian principle. It runs counter, though, to a lot of uh, the culture. So people are fearful of giving themselves away. The higher we go in the Christian life, whether you be a layman with some authority, or if you're a deacon or a priest or a bishop or even the Pope, the higher you go, the lower you must go. Eventually you go high enough that there is not a job that's beneath you. The priest should live a life of, of sacrifice, a life of struggles, but should also do it with the knowledge that Christ has risen, which gives him immense joy, which is a joy and a peace that the world cannot touch, the world can't take away which is why we can look back and see the saints and see the martyrs. You know, you're being burned at the stake and yet you have a pervading peace about you. How can that be? It's because their happiness is not contingent upon anything here on this earth. Everything we do in Christ, whether it be eat breakfast or play basketball or celebrate the mass, everything is touched with glory because of Christ. If you're a priest, that's your vocation, that's your calling, it's who you are you play basketball as a priest. I see no other life worth living for me than being a priest, a Catholic priest. It's a lot of pressure, but yet it's a gift as well. This guy, Jesus, if you can muster the trust to follow him into the breach, I've experienced this, that every single time you go there with him, there's this glory on the other side. I believe that ordination and the years to follow in the priesthood will be filled with that glory.